Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today we are going to talk about a stereo mic technique called XY. Quick uh, message from the editor's desk here. Uh, I said XY for some reason. I'm in mid-side. That's the whole title of the video. I'm not off to a good start here. Anyways, back to it. Back to it. I just tried this technique for the first time within the last couple of weeks, and I figured, you know, a couple of the mistakes that I made, lessons I learned, uh, would make some good uh, content here to share with you all if you ever find yourself uh, wanting to try this mic technique. Now there's one kind of unique requirement for mid-side compared to um, other stereo miking techniques, and that's that one of your two microphones needs to be a figure eight pattern. I know in home studios, not everybody just has a figure eight <laughs> kind of a mic laying around, but if you have something like a multi-pattern microphone uh, or a ribbon microphone even, um, those you know tend to have capabilities uh, to be figure eight. So who knows, you might have one laying around. And then your second microphone in, in this mid-side array that we're going to set up, um, it's just, you know, something directional, uh, cardioid, supercardioid, hypercardioid. Um, I guess you could use just about any polar pattern, even an Omni or something, um, just get slightly different results. Now, you don't have to have two of the same microphone. That's one unique thing about mid-side. Um, I see a lot of people as the mid mic, you know, using something like a small diaphragm pencil style condenser, and then as the side mic using, yeah, something figure eight, like a large diaphragm condenser or a ribbon. But the basic idea is to use one microphone to point directly at your source, and it's going to capture mostly direct signal. You know, now it's not going to pick up a whole lot of ambience. It's just going to be direct signal. And then your side mic is pointed perpendicular to that, and it's going to uh, catch no direct signal, or at least very little direct signal, and instead catch indirect signal and ambience. And then we'll use those to combine them in our DAW. We have a little bit of trickery we need to do uh, to set it up correctly. So what I've got here is a pair of AKG C414s. These are terrific microphones. Uh, they're both capable of uh, nine different polar patterns, so I will use one of them in a figure of eight, and I'll use the other one in cardioid. So to kind of recreate the, the first problem that I had, and, and I've read of, you know, a few other people having this same problem, um, I am just going to set the mics up with the mindset of how I would normally mic like an acoustic guitar. And that, that's what I'm just going to use an acoustic guitar uh, throughout this uh, example here. Typically, when I mic an acoustic guitar, let me grab it here, I typically use a cardioid uh, microphone. And I just point it uh, right about where the neck meets the body, uh, somewhere between the 12th and 14th fret, maybe. Um, you know, I'd see, like, you know, like Warren Heward, you know, has a great idea to, um, you know, point the mic more at the, this kind of lower bout here. Uh, I, I typically just aim, you know, somewhere right, right around here. Um, I keep it at a distance of maybe, I don't know, maybe as close as eight inches, maybe as far away as a foot or 18 inches. Uh, right now, I would say I'm probably about 16 inches away. And, you know, with a single cardioid uh, microphone, that's just kind of my go-to acoustic guitar, you know, uh, mic position. And so that's kind of where I wanted to start uh, when it came to mid-side, since this is just kind of a familiar mic position to me. So let's record just a little snippet of that, since this is the first thing that I tried, and uh, we'll set up the, the kind of uh, uh, decoding of the mid-side signal in our DAW, show you how to do that, and we'll take a listen, and I think pretty quickly we'll um, discover the error that I've already made here. <laughs> All right? One, two, three. Okay, yeah, and you can hear, you know, both of them together. I don't know, they don't really sound like anything special. Um, they almost sound kind of a little phasey and almost just kind of, just a little weird even. Uh, so I guess uh, you could say the magic happens with mid-side uh, with what you do in post-processing here. So let me uh, spin around and uh, we'll take a look at how to do that. So kind of the, the trick here to mid-side is that, so we, we leave the mid signal alone. We take the side signal and we duplicate it. So I'm just going to duplicate tracks. All right. So I'll just rename this as, um, you know, side one, maybe and side two. There we go. So now we have actually two copies of the, uh, of the side. Uh, I am going to link these two together so I can kind of control them together. Um, my favorite way to do that is just to create a, um, folder 
And uh, I'll just call this, you know, side, what did I do? Hit caps lock, side folder. And uh, I'm just gonna tuck those uh, two side tracks uh, underneath. So, so far, just duplicating it, we didn't really accomplish anything, right? It's just gonna make it a little louder, <laughs> that side signal. So the trick is that we take, we pick one of these two side signals and we invert the phase, we invert the uh, polarity of it. And so in Reaper, it's just this little button right here. So there's a, it's a toggle between normal phase. Um, so if we listen to it with normal phase, yeah, it, it just made it a little louder, that's all. So we flip the phase of one of these copies 180 degrees. I am going to mute the mid for right now. So now kind of the final step of the, uh, the trick here for mid side is we're gonna pick one of these and we are gonna pan it uh, 100%. I'm gonna do this on my control surface because in, in Reaper 6, I, I don't know where the pan knob went. Um, I haven't really set it up 100% yet. I see an indicator of its pan center but I don't know where the knob is to adjust it. So eh, that's, a, that's a problem for some other time. So I'm gonna use my control surface and I'm gonna take one of these and pan it 100% left. And then I'm just gonna take the other one and I'm gonna pan it 100% right. And it doesn't really matter which one you pick. It doesn't really matter which one you flip phase on or anything. Um, just flip phase on one or the other. Okay, so now when I press play, Again, we have two identical signals, 180 degrees out of phase. Now, if you're listening on a mono device, like maybe your cell phone or a tablet, um, you're probably gonna hear nothing once I press play. If you're listening on a stereo device, uh, you'll, you will hear this and it, it's just gonna sound weird. Uh, I think that this, I've like, this hurts my brain, but let me hit play here. Yeah. So I do actually hear it. And when my left ear is hearing something 180 degrees out of phase with my right ear it just sounds weird it just it hurts my head i think it sounds very unpleasant um so now that i've got <laughs> i've got the side duplicated i've got the sides panned 100 percent left and right as wide as they'll go and i have the phase inverted on one of the two and then i've also tied them together um, under a single folder, so I can use just a single fader to control the level of both of the sides. So I'm gonna turn the sides all the way down. Uh, I'm gonna unmute the middle, and uh, I'm just gonna play the middle, and I'm gonna start to bring the sides in. And again, if you're listening on a stereo device, um, you should start to hear some of this kind of fullness, this kind of space, and uh, you know, come up around that middle acoustic guitar signal and that unpleasant phasey sound of the sides shouldn't be uh, much of a problem. Unless we get them like really loud and they start to overpower the mid. So I'm just gonna hit play. I'm gonna start bringing the um, sides up. So there's just the mid. And honestly, I think that sounds like a great mono acoustic guitar sound. So let's bring up the mid or bring up the sides. Yeah, and it just kind of adds this space around it. Which I I really like. I, I like that. Uh, oh, I'm I'm also really short because I'm not on my stool. Um, <laughs> here, I'll tell you what. I'll address this one over here. <laughs> so what we're hearing, the the stereo information that we're that we're hearing, is mainly the timing difference, the time delay between this cardioid middle mic and the figure eight, you know, side mics. You know, that direct signal is hitting, you know, that mid mic. Um, a little quicker, a little faster than the kind of reflected ambient sound is hitting the side mic. And, and yeah, it just adds a little bit of space, a little bit of kind of ambience around it there. But, as, but let's take another listen to that. And I, I, I can hear the same problem in this that I heard in my first uh, attempt. And let's take another quick look here, or listen here. And listen to the panning, you know? So I, I, I have the, the mid mic is panned uh, dead center. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pan center here. 
Um, and then I have equal panning on the sides, right? They're both, you know, 100% left, 100% right. So this should be a dead center stereo image. But if you listen, the stereo image, in this case, leans over to the left. Like it's definitely louder on the left. And you can even see on the meters here, you know, that the left side of the master is definitely peaking higher than the right side of the master. And if I grab something like, oh, what's it called? Is it PAZ? And, uh, and yeah, so let's bring up PAZ or whatever. And this is just kind of a bit of a uh, stereo, um, I don't know what to call it, just like a stereo metering tool. And so if I go ahead and hit play, you can see here, like that image is definitely leaning left. You know, this whole blob here is definitely pointing leftward. And so this really drove me crazy. Um, I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. <laughs> I'm gonna get back on my stool here because I <laughs> feel really short. And, you know, did some reading on the forums and everything, and um, I, I couldn't quite find a satisfactory answer at first. But one of the main suggestions was, well, it's a stereo mic technique, so the closer you get to your source, the more exaggerated the stereo field is gonna get. So just back away from your source. So I tried that as well. So the same mic array, uh, I won't repeat it here, but um, I scooted it back like another two feet. And, you know, got quite, for me, quite a ways away um, from, you know, for miking an acoustic guitar. And, yeah, same thing. The whole stereo image basically leans towards uh, the, the phase flipped side of the side uh, of the array. And man, it was driving me absolutely nuts until um, I found a thread on Gear Sluts that um, actually somebody put it like very well. And uh, when you have a, a single microphone, you know, no stereo information in that, you know, pointing at the neck, uh, at, the, at the neck body joint like I normally do, well, that gives you a lopsided stereo image of, uh, of an acoustic guitar. On a single mono mic, you're never going to detect that because it doesn't really matter. But once you start introducing stereo information, um, you realize that, you know, at the, at the neck joint, I put my guitar away, uh, at the neck joint of the guitar, um, everything towards the body, like that's where all the volume from a guitar comes from, is off to that side. And everything towards the neck, it doesn't, you know, generate a whole lot of sound. So that's kind of the quiet side um, versus the loud side, which is the vibrating top on the guitar and the, you know, air in and out of the sound hole. So all I really had to do was scoot my microphone array over to where it was more in the center of where all of the sound of the guitar comes from, rather than in my traditional uh, mic position. So let me give that a try here real quick. All right, so I, I've got so many lights and cameras and microphones and cables in here, it's gonna be easier to, to move me and the guitar rather than move the, uh, the mic. So I'm just gonna basically scoot over this way. And for, for me, um, in all my experiments and everything over the years of miking acoustic guitar, I hate pointing a microphone at the sound hole of an acoustic guitar because it, it tends to just come out really boomy, especially on a big body dreadnought like this. Um, it comes out boomy and I, I, I generally, uh, I just genuinely uh, dislike that sound. Um, but as it turns out, that's kind of about the middle of the stereo image of the body of a guitar. Um, I think I'm gonna try it uh, maybe with the, the mid mic, you know, pointed kind of back behind the sound hole here a little bit. And let's see if I can get kind of a more balanced stereo image. One, two, three, four. All right, now let's take a listen to that. I guess since, yeah, uh, I, I, 
I left the mid-side array configured uh, and, and just recorded to all three of those tracks. So you were hearing it in true mid-side uh, fashion as I was recording. Uh, I'm going to go back and listen to it myself, and let's see if that sounds a little more centered rather than leaning off to the left like it was before. There we go, and turn off the metronome. And I'm going to clear this display in PaaS here. And let's see if we go back and uh, listen to it there. Oh yeah, that definitely sounds balanced. The meter is even showing. You know, look at how much more centered this stereo image is. So still not, you know, perfectly centered by any means. Um, and depending on frequency, it sounds like, um, you know, it, like maybe the lower frequencies are still kind of bouncing a little bit over to the left. So, all right, I think that's just about everything that, that uh, I've got to say on the subject. There are um, much more experienced professionals out there with much more uh, to offer when it comes to kind of the theory behind mid-side and why it works and, and why it, um, you know, actually generates stereo information. Since I just started with this technique, you know, within the last couple of weeks myself, I just wanted to kind of share, um, you know, this, this weird phenomenon of it leaning one way and I couldn't figure out why and maybe if, if um, you're trying this yourself for the first time, hopefully this will save you a little bit of uh, frustration and trial and error and everything. Now, one kind of final thing here and then I'll go. And so since this is a stereo mic technique and I'm in a, you know, a relatively small room here and uh, it's relatively well treated. So there's not just a ton of ambience to be had in this room. So I figured maybe I would try the same mic technique um, a little greater distance away but also in a much larger, much more reverberant room. So our living room upstairs is much larger, uh, has a higher, way higher ceiling, um, a lot more hard surfaces, uh, not very much acoustic treatment. Um, so it's very reverberant. So I figured I would like to try this mic array uh, up there and just kind of uh, hear what it sounds like uh, with a little bit more ambience to offer. One, two, three, four. All right, I just wanted to record this uh, little quick sign off here um, before I moved all the cameras and everything. So I assume that that went well and it sounded just, you know, amazing. <laughs> I have no idea, I haven't done it yet. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this has been at least a little helpful. Um, I think that's gonna do it for me this time and I will see you guys next time.